When it comes to pricey handbags, most everyone's looking for a really good deal. But sometimes the reason that what look like designer bags are so cheap is that they're knockoffs. It's a huge, high stakes and dangerous black market business making drug money look small. ABC's David Wright joins law enforcement on the front lines in the fight against fakes. At a rooftop police parking lot in downtown LA. This is gonna be a very complicated case, so we gotta be on top of it. Final briefing for a joint task force of the FBI and the LAPD. He was arrested twice already in the past. Uh, investigative consultants did three undercover buys from him. When the questions and the donuts are finished, the agents and officers mount up. Let me call you back. We're serving a search warrant right now, okay? Roger, run away. Soon they'll be racing up the stairs of a nearby building. Police department, open up the door. We're kicking it down. No, this is not a drug bust. These are officers with the LAPD's vice squad, searching for something far more profitable than drugs. ABC News, look if we come in to Counterfeit goods. Lots of brand names too, huh? You got them all covered here. All of it fake. Saint Laurent, Gucci, Hermes. Vives en Juntos is one. Detective Rick Ishitani has been on the counterfeit beat more than a dozen years. There's more money made from this stuff than narcotics. It's an average of $500 billion a year. He does busts like this 30 to 35 times a year. Wow, yeah. a couple a month. Yes, yes. Counterfeit goods, from luxury handbags to DVDs, are a huge problem. Industry groups claim criminals steal copyrighted material worth half a trillion dollars every year. And while that estimate may be grossly inflated, like the price of some luxury goods, the losses to big brand names are big enough to make copyright enforcement a huge priority for the Customs Service. <laughs> Front lines in that fight are here, the port of Los Angeles and Long Beach, biggest in the U.S. of A. More goods come through Los Angeles, Long Beach than all other major American ports combined. We're the largest seaport in the country by far. Approximately 40% of all the maritime cargo that enters the United States does throw through this complex here. That's because this is the first stop for almost everything the U.S. imports from China, Japan, and Korea. That's a lot of stuff. On average, a container arrives here every six seconds, though never one at a time, always on huge vessels like this one. Nightline embedded with U.S. Customs and Border Protection to see how they lead the effort to police counterfeit goods. With the tsunami of goods coming in every day, a significant challenge to find contraband. Seems like it's literally going to be looking for a needle in a haystack. Well, the advanced information that we do receive really helps whittle that, that haystack down. Before this vessel even set sail from China, a manifest describing the contents of each container arrived here in L.A. It's Ken Price's job to search for the needle before the haystack even gets here. I look at container freight coming into the U.S. to make sure that it is what they say it is. After 20 years on the job, he has a good eye for things that are out of the ordinary, just on the paperwork. It just doesn't make sense, and so I want to see what's in there. All of which takes place days, even weeks before the ship even ties off. It has to be that way. Hi, how are you? Because there's simply too much to search. Today, as we board this vessel, the customs officers have a pretty good idea where to look. As immigration clears the captain and crew, where are you from? I'm from the South Korea. The officers are already doing a preliminary search. They take their time. A ship like this will take days to unload. Among the most urgent priorities, things that might pose a health or a safety threat. Radioactive material, for one. The scanners indicate the presence of radiation on this truck. So it'll have to go through a secondary inspection. In this case, thankfully, apparently not radiation that poses any threat. It's telling us it's natural potassium-40. It's a natural radiation, so it's not a dangerous type of radiation that we should be worried about. Anything flagged based on the manifest goes through an RPM scanner, short for radiation portal monitor, sort of an x-ray device. What we're looking for is things that could be drugs, things that could be weapons. 
We're only allowed to show you part of this process. This is where we get all the readings of all the containers that come through. The Customs Department requested we keep some procedures to ourselves for security reasons. But if the container is in any way suspicious, customs officers open it on the spot. What did the manifest say it was? Shoes. Sure enough, shoes. The goods that are impounded for secondary inspection end up here, in a warehouse a few blocks away from the port. What we have here is a uh, suspected counterfeit Hermes Birkin handbag. And it Supervisor did, uh, Brian Nockadil shows us a shipment of fake Hermes bags. 16,000 of them. When the officers go through our targeting system, what they saw was the importer on record was listed as a uh, home and garden store, but the commodity itself was manifested as handbags, so that didn't add up. The bags sure add up, though. If they were real, this shipment would be worth more than $210 million. On the black market, the fakes would fetch 300,000. And chances are whoever this was addressed to is going to say, I don't know anything about it. If they're smart, I'd imagine that's what they would say. They would just uh, wash their hands completely of it. The customs agents take umbrage at any suggestion this is a victimless crime, or that through enforcement efforts like this, the U.S. government is helping to prop up the artificially high price of luxury goods targeted by the knockoff artists. They insist it isn't just the makers of $4,000 bags that are harmed by counterfeit imports. More than likely, it's going to go. It's going to finance some other illicit activity, whether it be terrorism, human trafficking, drugs, something of the such. Some. So this is a criminal's ATM machine, is what you're saying? These fake bags. Yes, it's the same as importing drugs or people. And it isn't just luxury goods that get knocked off. Is this real stuff or fake stuff? The problem is, it's both. Jonathan Gelfand is general counsel yeah. of Beachbody makers of P90X, Insanity, and other popular workout videos. For every real set of workout videos on that desk, there's a fake set that's virtually indistinguishable. The company has several full-time employees whose only job is to search constantly online, looking for deals on Beachbody products that are too good to be true. How big a problem is it for you? Our problem is humongous with piracy right now. It, it costs us close to $75 million a year, and that's what we can track. That's 10% of the company's revenues, money that doesn't go to new products or employees or to investors. Back at that LAPD bus, the 24-year-old guy who runs this back alley shop pleads for leniency. I'm doing this for my family. I'm doing this to support my family. If convicted, he'll likely be deported for a second time. I'm not going to see my family. I'm not going to see my baby girl. But Detective Ishitani suspects he'll eventually make his way back. From a law enforcement standpoint, is this a losing battle? We won't ever say it's a losing battle, but every step we make, you know, it's a gain for us. Even a raid like this one is just a drop in the bucket, he says. And there is an ocean of illegal goods to police. I'm David Wright for Nightline in Los Angeles.